Okay, so David, yeah. thank you for joining us. Gotcha. And here we are at the, uh, the first opening ceremony of the Butterfly Count 2018. What is the significance of having this event every year, would you say? Because it gives you a picture of what is happening to the butterflies across the country. And butterflies are very good indicators of the health of the natural world. Uh, so by taking it on a regular basis like that, you get an overall picture uh, in quite considerable detail, because tens of thousands of people take part in this, uh, of what is happening to the wildlife in this country. Uh, butterflies, certainly, but also that has implications for other things. Of course, yeah. So would you say that the people of today are mostly out of touch of, with wildlife in general? Oh, I think urban people, quite obviously, uh, if you don't live in the country, are not as as much in touch with it as, as you would be if you did. Um, so that's the case, and, and the population of this country is growing, growing, still growing, uh, not just because of the birth rate, which isn't, which isn't growing, but more people living here. Uh, and so they all need to, to, wherever I go, you, you see buildings being put up quite right, because people have got homes, and there are more people who need homes. Yes, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So with all those homes, would you say it's crucial for uh, people to start looking at gardening in a wildlife-friendly manner? I, th I think so, personally. Uh, but, I, but people will get a great pleasure from doing mm. so. Um, and I think it's good for the soul, really. Yes. Um, to seeing, uh, being in touch with the natural world with forces and, and, and uh, organisms that have been here long before we were, individually, and will be along here after we're gone. Um, and that's important. Helicopter. <laughs> Anyone got a shotgun? <laughs> so yeah, so gardens obviously, uh, we go around the country basically um, designing wildlife gardens and installing wildlife gardens for people and um, the benefits are so huge, even within a few months of them being installed even things such as a wildlife pond or a little flowering lawn or nectar border. Um, what would you say are the key features to a garden for, for habitat for wildlife or to attract, try and attract wildlife to a garden? Well, I'm talking to experts. I mean, <laughs> yeah, why should I tell you? You should be telling me. But um, one of the things that does impress me, actually, is if you, if you just put a little pond, it doesn't matter how small it is, it is uh, like an extraordinary magnet to wildlife of all kinds. Where it comes from is a mystery. Absolutely and you it? come in the middle of a concrete jungle and you make a little pond, and before you know where you are, there are dragonflies. Yes, yeah. I mean, it, 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 astonishing. Yeah. Astonishes me. I mean, Jim, we, Jim's yeah. even had water boatmen bouncing off his forehead when we've been filling them up, so. <laughs> Yeah. We used to, we used to they sit, are extraordinary. It's incredible. We used to sit and watch you on a Sunday afternoon, you know, natural world, and then we'd go and we'd put this little fiberglass pond in. Yeah. And within a week, That's there were right. newts, there were dragonflies, That's there were right. dandelflies. That's right. Phenomenal, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. Incredible. And in terms of butterflies, obviously you've travelled the globe, you know, you, we all know that you, you're a very well travelled man, but locally, have you witnessed declines? Have you seen catastrophic losses in butterflies and moths or recoveries, anything that strikes you yeah, on a personal it's, note? It's very difficult um, uh, to do that, unless you keep a log, which I don't because I'm, I was, I'm gathered about too much. Um, but um, it, it, it isn't enough to say, I think that there's less than one. You should be able to get proper evidence, and to do that, you've got to be systematic about it and yes. keep... Uh, keep logs of, and counts of, of what you see and only then can you actually begin to get a realist perspective on what's been happening but that's the important thing about the big butterfly count is that you've got tens of thousands of people all over the country who do it year after year I mean it's been going for nearly a decade now um, and so suddenly you get really good evidence not just I feel it's this way or that way you get good evidence of what's happening to the various species how their how their uh, distribution is changing some are, are, are going shrinking and moving up northward others are coming in from Europe I mean I saw uh, there was a, a, a hummingbird hawk moth in my garden here in Richmond uh, only the other day I'd never seen one before and of course they're magnificent mm. things, I don't yeah. really oh, yes. see yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah. them, do you? A few, not yeah. too many, not as many as I believe. Well, in the south should. coast or? Uh, well, we're, we're South Lincolnshire, so yeah. we're, we're not a million miles from, from where you grew yeah. up in Leicestershire, yeah. I believe. Oh, really? But, um, yeah. Yeah. Are they in Leicestershire? 
Uh, yes, yeah. Are yeah, they? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, red, red valerian is a good one for them. Yeah, they yeah. Really like that's red right. Valerian. Well, that's that's a consequence of uh, climate change. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, people uh, doubt it. The, the, the evidence is overwhelming. The, what the climate is changing, yeah. mm. and and the distribution of all kinds of animals, including butterflies and moths, is changing as an indicator of this. Yeah. And in terms of habitats nationally. Um, one thing that we're really trying trying to do is push wildflower meadows um, because they are such an invaluable source of wildlife. We believe so. Is that would you share the same same yeah, view? Yeah, and they're, they're less trouble than the herbaceous border. I can tell you. <laughs> right. yes. I, I've, yeah. I've got a wild. When people come and they say, oh, "What about all that area? That's a wildlife meadow," okay. I say, <laughs> and uh, and jolly good it is too. And I do. I mean, I've I've got a lot of meadow browns and all mm. sorts. And, uh, and and blues and so on. Oh, and it's lovely, right yeah. in the middle of the city. Yeah, absolutely so. And 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 the the pleasure I get these days, I I, I mean I knew enough botany in my time to know about succession, but it is very very nice to see the the way in which the, the native plants actually succeed one another, come into blooming at different times and so on, and the, the changes of the colours from the from the, uh, the yellows are the, are the first things that you see, and then they come into the blues, yes, uh, yeah, into, yeah. The, into the whites. And, the and so, I mean, just recently we've had, of course, those, the daisies have come up there. Yes, yeah. They're very good this year.